uh, we want to simulate say thickness or we want to say simulate efficiency of a solar cell as a thickness uh, of absorber layer or of buffer layer or say you want to optimize the band gap which is a suitable band gap uh, what should be the band gap of the absorber layer what should be the band gap of buffer layer or you want to simulate what sort of carrier density which will give you a maximum efficiency so efficiency is a function of carrier density or you want to demonstrate the effect of defect density so how defect density is uh, impacting the efficiency so you are varying defect density in particular range and then you are observing how efficiency is uh, evolve evolving so those things can be done by batch setup so i will just demonstrate here you go to set problem select any one, any one of the problem so i have selected already one problem cdt base which is your which is your uh, inbuilt file from here after selecting this file uh, there is a reflection and transmit transmutation value is given so you can see reflection is this uh, light is coming from the front so right contact is the front it's already written here right contact which is front so you can see the arrows are marked so r is the reflection so reflection is zero so that means no there's no reflection so transmutation is one t is one transmittance is one so all the light which is falling is being transmitted so if you want to implement the effect of arc anti reflective coating then you can give some value to reflection so some say 10% of the light is being reflected back so 0.1 you will write 0.1 or 20% then you write 0.2 like that so after this uh, let me select okay and i want to simulate the effect of uh, uh, i want to uh, simulate any desired uh, simulation which i want to do so i will go to batch setup click on the batch setup then you will find uh, say cdt layer because our layer is cdt layer so in that layer or you if you click here you will get all the parameter which you can like uh, select here so you can select left contact you can select cdt layer you can select cdt cds layer n type n plus sno layer right contact internal reflection you can internal transmission you can uh, trailing processes temperature temperature value you can vary well well vary uh, say from uh, lower temperature you if you want to see what happens to solar cell or at higher temperature what happens to solar cell so that you can give resistance values frequency voltage illumination intensities so all these can be um, varied and your parameter can be uh, say uh, calculated so if i select cdt layer and say what i want to select here cdt layer what i want to say uh, uh, optimize say i want to optimize thickness so if uh, given here all those parameter so i will select thickness so you can select say defect what should be defect what should be band gap you can select total uh, uh, accepted density all the material all these parameter you can select so here i am optimizing thickness so i will select thickness and then set uh, so i will give some particular value of thicknesses so we'll say 0.01 i will give very few values because i just want to demonstrate so 0.01 point 0.1 say 1 say 2 say 5 so these these some values i have given uh, so these values are in micro micrometer you can see this is written micrometer so all all are in micrometer so up to 5 micrometer we are varying our thickness of cdt layer select okay select okay so now my thickness is okay now which parameter i want to uh, simulate or which parameter i want to optimize with respect to thickness so you go to recorder once you go to recorder here you go to click iv characteristic so all iv characteristic uh, you select all iv characteristic so all these parameter it will be selected okay so already i have i have been select i have selected all of them so suppose if you want to select say some other parameter say j recombination total recombination so you can select total recombination if you want to select say um, some other parameter say um, generation so generation go to generation panel and go here so what is the generation of electron so band to band uh, generation total recombination all those parameter you can select so if i go here uh, general parameter uh, this is total recombination also i can select okay so the total recombination values uh, jrc so i have already selected total recombination this one is to j recombination with the j recombination total throughout the device so that is already being selected so after selecting it 
I can click OK and now I will calculate recorder. So I will just click calculate recorder. So it will do the calculation for the given thickness value. So you can see the thickness of observer layer is varying. Okay. So thickness is varying and each at each thickness it is calculating IV because I have selected IV curve. So there it is calculating IV and then it will give out uh, the desired parameter. You go to recorder. So you can see. So J recombination is this. So J recombination is this. Okay. So J recombination is increasing with the thickness. As the thickness is increasing, the combination current is increasing. Okay. What happened to the efficiency? So efficiency, you can see efficiency is saturating after a particular point. So say after two micron, the efficiency become saturate at 16 percent. So other parameter uh, VOC is is increasing with thickness. What happened to fill factor? So it is decreasing with thickness. If the thickness goes beyond one one micron, fill factor is decreasing. So what happened to JSC? So JSC is also saturating out with thickness. Okay. So this is how you can plot uh, these curve, and then you can get the data from show. If you click on show, so all those data you can get here. Okay. So then you can copy. So this is done. Suppose if I want to simulate this is for one single layer. Now I want to simulate two parameter at, a, at, 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 at once. So what should be the thickness of observer layer that I know now. Uh, if I want to simulate both of them simultaneously the thickness of observer layer and thickness of buffer layer or the, or at the same time. So I will go to batch setup. So already I have selected thickness of uh, observer layer. I will click add. Now here I will select CDS and thickness here. Okay. And then I will give the parameter for uh, I will give the parameter for uh, this CDS layer. So CDS layer thickness should be small. So 0 0.01, uh, then 0 .0, uh, 0 0.01 to 0.05, so then 0.1. So these three values I am select uh, selected. So now these three values and uh, how many how much values these are? These are uh, five values. So five five into three is 15. So it will run 15 simulations. Okay, so 15 simulation is will done if I just uh, click on the recorder setup and for all those uh, it will calculate these parameters as a uh, function of those two frequent those two thicknesses. Okay, so this is how you can done if I just cal cal calculate recorder then it will uh, perform I will let, let me show you. So once I calculate recorder so it will perform 15 calculations and it will simultaneously give me the plot. So this plot you can plot in uh, in contour plot. So contour plot like uh, that is two dimensional plot. So two parameters are being varied simultaneously and the third function is being optimized. So uh, this this way you can uh, generate your contour plot. So this this will this data will help you uh, there. So you can see now the thickness of CDS, CD, CDS layer is increasing. You can see. Okay. So so this is how for a uh, uh, we can optimize we can use batch parameter to do uh, desired uh, optimization in the cell in, the, in our cellular solar cell structure okay so this is done so if i click recorder now you can see thickness of cdt cds and thickness of cds layer so this is how it is varying if i show you uh, so now you can see one of the v1 v1 is your cdt layer and v2 is your cds layer thickness so how these thicknesses are there and then how the efficiency is coming out so this is j recombination so how j recombination is coming out okay so like that you can uh, 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 plot using this data you can plot contour plot so let me show you what is contour plot actually is so contour plot so this kind of plot <coughs> so this kind of plot so this kind of plot so here is one parameter so this is one parameter on this x axis and this is uh, another parameter on the y axis okay so uh, based upon these two parameters this color grading is telling us about one of the parameters let's say efficiency so where the efficiency is maximum so that's why that's how you can plot a contour plot using this batch parameter batch parameter okay so okay this is done and after this what are the other thing you can do using batch parameter Suppose if I want to run simulation not with a thickness, I will remove it. I will uh, vary only one layer. So 
in the one layer is suppose if I want to optimize the uh, say defect so let me see what are the defect I have taken <coughs> so in CDS we have taken donor type defect and the defect density is 2 into towards 14 this is a donor de density okay so what I will do I will go back to the batch setup I have already selected defect so what parameter I want to um, vary for the defect so I want to vary the defect density select defect density go to set and now <coughs> give those values so 1 e 12 I'm just giving some some values and I'm just demonstrating few values with few values because I don't want my simulation to take more time so I've taken three values and uh, with these three value how the how this uh, already selected these parameter VOC GSC how they will behave so I want to do that so I will just calculate recorder so now what is happening to the efficiency with respect to defect so I'm increasing defect from 10 to 12 to 10 to 14 and then we are seeing how efficiency is evolving <coughs> so you can see J recombination is increasing linearly with this with increasing the defects okay what about to efficiency so you can see efficiency is decreasing down with defects as the defect increase efficiency is decreasing down So that is a condition. So, so similarly, you can vary <coughs> any desired parameter. Suppose I want to vary mm, now. I want to vary temperature. So I will go and I will select the temperature. Okay. Now I will give the temperature value, say, uh, um, some elevated temperature, so 400, and then 350, then 300, and then 2, 2, 2, 250. So only few values I'm taking, just because I want simulation not to take much time. So these three values, I've, these four values I've taken for uh, temperature and recorder. I'm keeping those only those values only not more than if you want if you want you can go and select any other value so just calculate just let me calculate the temperature so now you can see with temperature how the efficiency is varying so those simulation can also be done using batch parameter okay so if you want to do some other simulations so you can see with the increase in temperature the efficiency the efficiency the efficiency is decreasing uh, decrease with the increase in temperature efficiency is decreasing okay or with the lowering temperature efficiency is increasing okay? so that is what the case is shown here so <coughs> after this if you want to say plot similarly if you want to plot illumination intensity you can go and plot illumination intensity as a function of whatsoever parameter you want so here all the parameter you can vary so if you want to say re series resistance you want to vary shunt resistance you want to vary <coughs> so this is basically these two are same parameter the illumination if you want to vary and uh, right contact so if you want to say left contact value you want to vary so left contact what we can vary we can vary work function of the left contact so basically uh, we require at the left contact we require high work function so left contact uh, why we require high back, back contact high back work function because CDT is p-type so p-type uh, if you if you want to make a metal con metal as a ohmic contact then we require metal of high work function so you can select left uh, left contact surface recombination velocity all those things are there then the metal work function is there so like select it then you can see the effect of metal work function if you give the values So similarly if you want to run CV parameter, not only IV and now I am going to CV. So if you want to run CV parameter, you can select which from which voltage to which voltage you want to run and uh, at what temperature you want to run. So those things you can now select and uh, so CV parameter let me show you, let me show you how does CV parameter look like. So you can see this is the capacitance, this is the voltage. 
so voltage range you can give and then you can find out what the capacitance of the device coming out to be okay so from this cv plot you can find out this 1 by c 1 by c square 1 by c square okay uh, versus voltage so this is mod short key plot okay so using this cv plot you can uh, calculate this mod short key plot okay so uh, using cv plot you can do you, similarly you can plot cv cf plot so capacitance capacitance is a function of frequency and you can also plot qe plot also so what is qe coming out so qe plot if you want to run you can just give these wavelength ranges from what wavelength to what wavelength you want to plot and uh, <coughs> if you want to plot qe at different temperature suppose uh, qe at different temperature so that that also can be done if i just plot it show you go to batch setup select temperature and then uh, this is the values of temperature okay select them okay now okay and then you go to the recorder uh, <coughs> so select so look out for qe parameter so if you have qe parameter then you can plot otherwise so <coughs> otherwise you cannot plot so there's a one other way so i i don't think qe will be there so if it is if you can find then you can directly plot if it is not there no problem don't worry what you do uh, you run the single simulation the single sort so if i just run the single sort i will not get iv curve i will get only qe curve because i have selected only qe plot so if i click iv curve this is old iv curve so okay. so what i will do i will just click all, all simulation, clear all simulation then again run so now it will only give me qe plot so qe plot is this plot if I want to see any other plot, I cannot see IV curve. No, no one is selected because I have not selected. So now this QE plot at what temperature? It is at a temperature of working temperature with 300 Kelvin. Okay. So if, if, if I want to vary it, so I can vary it. I can put 350. Now I can plot. So now my QE plot is at a different temperature. So it is almost, oh, almost, uh, <coughs> it is almost uh, overlapping. Okay. So similarly, I can vary and then you, I can do. So I will keep it unchanged. Uh, similarly, if you can also do the biasing. So this is this voltage is biasing. So what I can do, I can put some initial biasing. So I can I can put some initial biasing. Say minus 0.1 if I put the initial biasing. Okay. So this is the biasing I am putting. Now I am taking the IV curve, uh, QE curve. So now you can see how the IV curve is looking like. Okay. So let me increase the biasing. Minor, uh, let me in, uh, negative biasing I am putting more negative biasing I am putting minus 0 0.5 then I will run running the QE curve so my uh, QE curve is still unchanged okay so let let us go more further and then run it QE curve so now you now we are seeing some changes some changes at a higher band, band gap higher wavelength side some changes are occurring okay so these things will tell you about um, carrier dynamics and all those things. So a good analysis is required in that case. So you can see. <coughs> so if I put some positive vising, what happens to that? So I put 1.2 and now I am running QE plot. Let me see what happens. So you can see <coughs> there is a impact of biasing on QE curve at higher wavelength side. Okay. So explanation for this, I will try to put in some other video. <coughs>